March 6, 1848, County Roscommon, Western Ireland. A family of tenant farmers is about to be torn from its heritage, stripped of its dignity, banished from the land of its ancestors. represent absolute loss. How do you represent one million dead? During the years known as the Great Hunger, the Neri family, along with half a million others in rural Ireland, are forcibly evicted from their homes. The devastation and the loss of family members is just uh, it's, uh, almost unparalleled. The force behind it all is a deadly biological agent. This pathogen can spread and actually within a month could take out the potato crop of a whole country. The disaster launches the first great migration to America. A story of suffering and sacrifice. An ordeal lost to history until now. Today, archaeologists in Ireland uncover this hidden story. A fragment of forgotten horror. A relic from a catastrophe that leaves a million dead. Forget? Me, not. It's a moment in time that will change the face of the old world and launch a million immigrants with the strength to build America. Hundred fifty years ago, a great famine ravaged this land and sent a million people fleeing to a new life in America. But to those who still live here, it's an unspeakable horror they would rather forget. The great famine becomes, in a sense, the great silence. How do you tell a story which is so horrific that it seems to be outside the bounds of normal representation? My uh, grandparents on both sides of my family, on my mother's side and on my father's side, actually arrived in East Boston in, in 1848. For many Irish Americans, like Senator Ted Kennedy, it's what brought their ancestors to a new land. The primary reason, as uh, so many other Irish immigrants, was really motivated by, because of the potato famine. For many more American descendants in search of their roots, the great silence is only now being broken. Dennis Shanley lives in Los Angeles. When I was growing up, I knew very little about my Irish ancestry. My father used to talk about his grandfather, Patrick, and that was about all I knew. By a strange twist of fate, Dennis Shanley's past is linked to that of another family 5,000 miles away. In Ireland, J.J. Nery and his wife don't have to hunt down their history. Their past has caught up with them. By incredible coincidence, they have bought a house on land once farmed by J.J.'s great-great-great-grandfather, Mark, who endured one of history's worst catastrophes in J.J.'s present backyard. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> it was very exciting when we found out that uh, J.J.'s ancestors actually came from this land, and we wondered a lot about the family, and we were anxious to find out more. Enter Professor Charles Orser, an archaeologist from Illinois State University. His specialty? Probing the stories of forgotten people. We can really learn in a way that isn't possible any other way of how the people actually live. Things that are never written about. A local balloonist helps Orser explore the deserted landscape. Green fields that hide scars of a bitter past. Since Protestant King Henry VIII invaded this Catholic land in the 1500s, the Irish had been forced to serve their English masters. Throughout Europe, landlords oppressed peasants. But here, to the Irish, the outrage cut even deeper. Looking down over what they would have seen as their ancestral territory, there was always there the sense, this land was ours before it was there. This land should be ours again. By 1845, 
still under English rule. Ireland is one of the most densely populated rural areas in the world. Barred from owning property, the Irish are regarded as subhuman. If the lack of real opportunity, the lack of hope, or the lack of real a chance to uh, develop for yourself and your family. But 1845 is a time of change. The rest of Europe teeters on the brink of revolution. America hurdles towards a war over slavery. In a village called Ballykilcline, over 80 families are fighting their own battle for justice. They're refusing to pay crippling rents to the English crown. Their rebellion will turn this forgotten place into a flashpoint for one of the greatest upheavals in history. In the field behind J.J. Neri's house, archaeologists search for evidence that his family lived through that struggle. To your left, two centimeters. This is a ground-penetrating radar survey in a three-dimensional mode. Electromagnetic energy is fired into the ground and it reflects off features in the subsurface. We can do a virtual dig on the site before the excavators move in and maybe be able to predict what they might find. Kevin Barton and his team are scouring the seemingly empty field to hunt for traces of ditches, walls or debris. After hours of painstaking work, ghost images of a place where the past was buried alive. The first clue a telltale scar running beneath the soil. Finally, positive proof that the Neri family actually lived here. The diagonal gash turns out to be a drainage ditch, part of the foundations of a house. It's a stunning discovery. Now Orser can start to reconstruct the place the Neri's called home. If we were standing here 155 years ago, we would see two houses behind us. Probably stone houses with thatched roofs. After more than a century in the shadows, the lives of the rebellious Neri family snap into sharp focus. You see a lot of activity, people in the fields, uh, smoke coming out of the chimneys. You'd see a living, vibrant community. A community built on a single remarkable plant, the potato, the staple food of Ireland. That, however, was a disaster in the making. At first, the humble spud had seemed like a miracle crop. It arrived from South America in the 16th century. Packed with vitamins, fiber, and carbohydrates, it flourished in Ireland's damp climate. What evolved was a man-made crop, which is now recognized as one of the most productive crops in the world. The population went, in a very short time, from one or two million to eight million. There was a population explosion. A population explosion that soon led to disaster. Dr. Mike Coffey at the University of California, Riverside, is a leading researcher into the potato and what went terribly wrong when the Irish staked their lives on it. For Coffey, it's a personal mission. Being a, an Irish American, professionally, what I'm doing is trying to make sure, as best I can as an individual, that this never happens again. What ends in disaster at first seems like salvation to the poor Irish farmers. By 1845, on this tiny, tiny island, there were eight million people, most of whom were desperately poor, but actually lived a fairly good life. On a quarter of an acre of land, you could support a family of 14. No other crop could feed so many mouths on so little land. The Irish become dangerously dependent upon it. Incredibly, the average Irishman eats as much as 14 pounds a day, and the English hate them for it. It was seen as a lazy crop grown by a lazy people in their lazy beds. It was seen as something which kept the Irish poor, which kind of encouraged overpopulation. But at the Nary House, Orser discovers evidence that the family had joined a rent strike to protest